Welcome to The Landscape Show, where nursery owners, growers, and landscapers from all over the Southeast are here to get down and dirty, discovering the latest products and ideas the industry has to offer. And organizers say this year, they are seeing green in more ways than one. The Landscape Show is especially gorgeous this year. Uh, I've been working this show for 30 years, and I have to say this is probably one of the most beautiful ones our team has put together. The exciting thing is that the um, economy is doing better. So when you think about pretty much any construction and development that's done, uh, there requires landscaping and trees, and our industry had really ramped up to supply those and so when the Great Recession came, um, several of them were hit particularly hard, particularly the tree growers. So we really are happy to see the trees back on our show floor and that business is good. Our attendance, which usually runs about 6,500, uh, is up by 7.5% this year, so we're excited about that. Um, people are being positive and uh, it's, it's just a really good year to be here at the Landscape Show. And that's true. With $15.3 billion in sales and Florida having the largest nursery industry in the nation, it's no wonder why the Landscape Show is such an important part of the Orange County Convention Center, our local parks, green spaces, homes, and businesses. So you are looking at one of the most popular trends right now in gardening, which is the square foot garden. Look at all these different varieties of plants that you have in just this small area. This is part of the booth here that's put on by Agra Starts, which is a company based in Apopka, Florida. And you guys do all kinds of things. I'm gonna bring in Ty Strode right now because He's really been educating me on everything to do with tissue cultures, which is so interesting what you guys do. But real quick, we have to talk about some of the interesting varieties that you have down here in the square foot garden that are from other countries. Yeah, uh, we've got quite a few things here. Um, we've got pandanus, which is called pandan. It's the only edible uh, pandanus. It's used to flavor rice and uh, used in baking. Um, and katuk is uh, just a high nutrient green. You can eat the leaves on and have continual production year round. Um, goji berries is uh, showing up in a lot of health food stores that yes. produces well in Florida. You hear a lot about that in the juices mm -hmm. that people are making now. Yep, absolutely. And it's a real easy plant to fruit. Um, blueberries, of course, blackberries, uh, some interesting spinaches that are supposedly uh, lowering people's cholesterol. So it's just something different you can grow in your backyard and these things aren't necessarily available at stores. So You guys do a lot of other really interesting things in your facility where it sounds like someone gives you a cutting of a plant, you can do what you do best, which is the tissue cultures, and then end up having a smaller plant. Yeah, so we, from one plant, we can take out the meristem cells, the cells that have the ability to regenerate themselves and grow, and we'll grow a plant. From there, we can make uh, thousands or millions of plants, and they're all uh, true to type uh, to the mother plant. So what's your response been like here at the convention center? It's been busy. It's been busy. A lot of people through picking up catalogs, asking questions about all these uh, different edible plants that, you know, aren't well known um, and just learning about different things they can grow. What do you think the future holds for specifically what you do, the tissue cultures, and really creating or finding new plants that will grow in different climates? It's just endless. I mean, there's so many different plants out there with different purposes. Um, so who knows, but we can make them. The landscape show is beautiful, but the technology, people, and equipment is the real magic that makes it all happen. It may look like some futuristic type of material, but I tell you what, I'm learning that this is a great way for plants to really develop their root system and to absorb more nutrients. Getting a great education here from Jamie Single with the company AirPot. And I tell you, when I walked by, I just wanted to reach out and touch this. But as I'm learning more about what this really is, it seems like for large plants in particular, if you want to have something and make sure that it's going to take when you plant it, this is a great way to do it. Yes, it is. It sort of it makes a difference in the way a plant establishes or the speed of establishment. And the, the, the people that win with that are everyone. The, the, the supplier of the plant wins because there's less failures. The contractor who plants it wins because there's less maintenance. And the client wins because the tree looks better quicker 
because it's lost its reliance on the root ball that he supplied it with. So talk about what you're holding in your hand because this is not your typical smooth-sided plastic pot that we see in the big box stores, right, when we pick up our plants. Talk about what these, I guess, cones here do. It's designed to actually stop root circling. The biggest problem in planting trees into the landscape is, is the fact that if they come out with circling roots, which you get from a slick-sided pot, and nobody treats that root system, the tree will go into the ground and it will end up ring barking itself if there's a root that goes 360 degrees around the pot. This system is designed to eliminate that altogether by directing roots towards a point of air. Yes. The inside cone pushes the root towards the outside cone as it's trying to grow. And as it gets to too much air in the soil, the tip of the root dehydrates. When that happens, the tree responds by sending out more roots to compensate for the loss. So one root becomes 10 roots, becomes 100 roots, and all of those roots are new white-tipped feeder roots, which are able to absorb nutrient and moisture. But, so you have more roots absorbing more nutrient and moisture, which goes into the plant above. So when you have something like the air pot, it allows for the plant to really fully develop. Yes. And also, I thought it was really interesting, especially when you have a large tree, how fast does it actually take to the soil when you finally plant it? When you finally plant it, the, the difference is that because all the roots are there pointing in the right direction, those roots have either just been air pruned or just about to be air pruned. So when you take the pot off and you put the plant in the soil, the root system has a very short distance to grow before it's beginning to establish itself in the landscape that it's been put into. So it's basically instant. It happens the next day or the day after, yeah. It's specified at the London Olympics, it was specified that all the trees had to be grown in this container for two years before planting. We sell it into Oman, they're building a new botanic garden in Oman. It does make a remarkable difference horticulturally. So what has your response been here at uh, this convention? Oh, it's fantastic. We've been coming to Florida since 1996 and we're still here and we like being here and uh, we have one of our biggest customers here so it's it's for us it's been fantastic and we're going to be here next year the landscape show is a showcase featuring over 200,000 square feet of trees equipment and the latest technology from nearly 450 exhibitors you'll find rock star products and discover new looks talents and ideas that the industry has to offer Visit fngla.org for details.